you know when you get a cold call from like a company that's just for Mister, whatever? Mister Dan, Mister Dan. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you just East, tell them to fuck off, or do you do you have a play with them? East Norweb. The woman in um. So when we were rehearsing the dance, and I don't think we got all of this on camera, so I'll just say the story now. She rang me. She goes, "Hello, Miss Dero. I'm calling from UK Mobile Limited." <laughs> she was from UK Mobile. UK Mobile Limited. <laughs> <laughs> Geographically, just let me place it. I don't know. I'm just telling you exactly what she sounded like. Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Sorry, Miss Dero. Just... I'm calling from the UK Classic Mobile Morecambe. Limited, and I'm calling you to offer you a change to your tariff. And I went, "Listen, love, I'm really interested. I have been looking for a new phone provider, but I am in the middle of burying a dead body. <laughs> Can you call me back <laughs> later this afternoon?" And she goes, excuse me. And I went, I'm in the middle of burying a dead body. Can you call me back later this afternoon? And she went, well, then I don't want to call you back. Put the phone down. You <laughs> came up and we have a policy. Don't sell a phone to my anyone. My favourite one of them ever was when I got- Burying bodies. When I lived in my auntie's and I had just like the day off and was bored. And someone rang and said, have you been in a car accident? That wasn't your fault. And I was like, how the fuck do you know about that so soon? She was like, when did it happen? I was like, this morning. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was driving me Citroen Picasso. <laughs> there was seven of us in the car. And my wife had hold of the newborn baby as well. And someone came through a red light and smashed into the side of us. And it took the fella an hour. I had our dolly next to me. Because he was like, right, so I need the names of everyone in the car. So I was like, yeah, oh got them all. I gave him the names of everyone. He was Andy like, I need, I need their postcode, Ooh. their address. So I had dolly next to me, literally finding like the postcodes to match addresses of streets around Liverpool. Took him through for a full hour and right at the end, I just went, I'm only messing, you know, lad. And he went, you know what? To be fair, this is the best one of these I've ever had. And then he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> it took me an hour to give him the details of seven people and a baby who had been hit in a car accident that head, day. In his head, he's getting, I'm getting 20% commission on this. He's like, oh, I'm going to buy a holiday home in Portugal. It's a do you know what the best thing to do with them is? Because they can't hang up on you or be rude, let them talk for an extended period of time and go, I'm so sorry, can you repeat that, please? And they have to, but like by the third time, the worst. they are in a bad mood. You two are the worst. <laughs> it's just a dangerous combination of some of the most annoying tendencies, plus incredible imaginations, <laughs> plus this... <laughs> <laughs> the, the the will to be annoying, the creativity to just keep going with the bullshit, and also this weird like persistence where you're like, no, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> the persistence. So oh, we we once spent a full afternoon just ringing random phone numbers from the phone book. Oh me, asking the woman. Oh, on you start cold calling other people. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. We would ring them right. And all we would do, and you've got to understand, we couldn't breathe for laughing at this. We did this for a full day. I'm talking four or five hours. Didn't once change tactic. Just a new number every time. Just the Cher guy one. Yeah. We would just <laughs> ring up, right? And I would go, I love, is Cher guy there? <laughs> and they'd go, oh. And I'd go, Cher guy, the horse. And she'd go, there's no horse here. And then in the background, Carl would go, nay. And I'd go, oh, never mind, he's here. And put the phone down. And that was a full day of our lives. How have you ended up where you are? <laughs> it's, I can't decide. I can't decide if, of course, that's the perfect preparation for this job. <laughs> oh, you should already. I used to bring numerous taxi firms to the house across the road and then watch them all argue in the street. <laughs> It was, I had, oh, me and the best thing to do is to hire a bouncy castle and ask for the earliest possible delivery. Yeah, yeah. bouncy castle skips. I've ordered meat. Um, <laughs> I've ordered so many things to so many houses. But Eon, so I, six, weeks, <laughs> six weeks ago, I put the phone down. They've called me twice a day for six weeks and I've ignored them all. And I'm like, I'm going to make them wait. The other day I got an email. Your, your payment has been successful. The payment went through. And now I'm in a hundred and three pound credit. They owe me money. Well, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the four days of that credit. So I'm going to call them twice a day and go, "Can I have the hundred and three pay pay per?" Pound? I'm going to bet every penny. <laughs> I'm going to have the hundred and three. I'm going to bet every penny that I've got that you do not commit to that. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably in there, but I'll turn the light on yesterday. It probably cost me about six grand. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I win. Fuck Eon. They've called me twice. You do today. win. We've all been so worried about you, but now you're free of it. You can just live your life now. Exactly. <laughs>